All right. Anyways. All right. So again, we're gonna we're gonna play through this casually, and then I'll co try to commentate. Summer Heroes deleted Tones Botloon's message. No, we're not bringing back the weebs. Okay, so what do we got here? I'm actually doing this blind. You can reset reload by pressing L and R together if you find yourself in a soft lock. Thanks to one bit. To leave a level, press start and select together. Have fun. The simple jump. Troy's here. Every Kaiser player is needs to know how to jump. Simply press the B button. When you jump and you keep holding your jump button, you will fall slower than without holding jump. Okay. Okay. How did I avoid that the first time? Thanks for the free bits. Oh no, I think that the AC gone or the heater? I don't even know. Chuck gate! Oh boy, Chuck gates. To pass this Chuck gate, jump when the Chuck's hands are on the ground so he jumps to then simply run under him. Um, I actually disagree with this. You want to jump when his hands are in the when his hands are up. See, look, his hands are up. That's when you jump, and you can go underneath. Jump when his hands are up. Hypers, dude. What's up, Rex? You think this is too hard for the second level? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out a good order to introduce everything. Chuck gates I'll do later. Reverse Chuck gate. Really? I've never seen these. <laughs> like, I think this is a good starting point. He he starts off good with at least teaching how to jump. But before we even get to Kaizo, I'll probably teach you just the mechanics of the game. And then we get to the jumps. Reverse Chuck gate. How's life? We're doing a little better. Dude, I've only seen this in Jamrel too. <laughs> You need to hold the jump A, B button and run button to cross one tail gaps. See, the see what I would have done first is not not even have the chuck here. I just have a one tile gap, so it teaches you that first, and then you bring the chuck in. Because now you gotta do this timing thing, you know? Oh, I accidentally reset the level. <laughs> Whoops. Is this a run through? Kind of. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do in mine. How I can improve this. How does it want homage? Alright, so for the bullet bills. Alright, we're gonna drop some knowledge on you guys. You ready for the knowledge drop? So when you're holding right or left without without like running like full P meter, whatever, you oscillate between 35 and 37. Alright. Your average speed is not 36, it's actually 35.8. I think that's what it is. And the bullets move at a speed of 32. So because you move faster than the bullets, you actually have to do small left rights to uh, make sure that you stay in the bullets. Alright, we'll do this again, alright? So you notice, well, if we hold right the entire time, we go faster. So that's why you gotta do, you gotta do small left rights. And I think we're gonna have a low that teaches you small left rights. And we'll probably do bullet bills. But not just bullet bills, but they will be important. So. Something more friendly to learn? Pretty much, yeah. Like, I want it to be bare bones basic. It goes from like absolute garbage, you don't know what the, anything in this game is about, to like just like an average Kai's level. And then there'll be like a special world for like, I don't know, extra stuff. Timing is key. 
Wait until the lava lotus shoots, then spin jump on it and hold the spin jump button. Did I over? Did I already go over the retry system? I mean, what do you want to know about the retry system? Will I do multicultural shells? Yes. I hate that I have to, but I'm going to. Am I going to post this on YouTube as a tutorial? This won't be the tutorial itself. Like, even though I'm doing a walkthrough and kind of commentating, uh, maybe I will. Maybe I'll highlight. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to do like an actual in-depth tutorial series when I make my hack. I'm going to start working on it after we're done with this. Can you make a master path to, with a choose your own grade difficulty? I could. Like, see, the one thing he didn't teach you is that you need momentum to jump further. Or I guess he didn't explain it. You kind of have, you kind of learn it there, but oh, I keep left writing, dude. Wait, this is bad. Because now I always die. <laughs> I think, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. It might be a long hack. That's what the people need. If you want to get good at Kaizo, you need to learn a lot of things, man. Well, you, need, you don't need to learn everything, but... I'll give you an option to learn most of the stuff and then there's like extra stuff in the special world or something yeah it's a disco shell the rainbow shell oh he has a multicultural shell level okay any grand pearl two tonight no try to stay on the right side of the disco shell all right so for disco shells every time you all right so remember when i said your max speed is like 35 to 37 so when you bounce off a multicultural shell, it reduces your speed to 24. So ideally, in, a, in an ideal world, you want to land on the right side of the shell and hold right. But the problem is if you do that, eventually you'll, you'll move too fast. So I'll try to demonstrate that here. Okay, well, he didn't give me enough space. So like... Um... It's really hard to tell, but you, I'm kind of getting a little faster than it. So for some hacks, like right here, yeah, see right there. You go a little fast, so what you want to do every now and then is let go of the Y button for, for a bit. So like, if you look at my input display, I'll just like let go of Y every now and then, and you should be good. But yeah, you d ideally you want to land on the shell as it's going one direction. Sometimes you'll like... What the hell is that? Sometimes you'll land on the shell and it'll, it'll go to the right, the left side like that and just get super annoying to deal with. 300 step to program, 300 step program to Kaiser Mastery. Hey, I mean, you want to get, the, you want to get good the game? Yo, what's up, Jesse? Oh yeah, that's probably what I'd do. I would have like a separate world. There'd be like, I guess there'd be like the, the normal mode. I don't know if you want to call it normal. Where it teaches you the mechanics of the game. And then there would be the actual Kaizo like mode where you want to learn Kaizo stuff. Which that one would probably be the most interested for most people. So like if you want to go through the like the just the mechanic path. That's very, like completely optional, and then you just go like want to do the actual Kaizo training thing, then yeah, we'll do that. And then there's a the special world, which will probably teach you stuff that you don't really need to know, but <laughs> are in like harder, harder um, hacks. You are able to spin up on the Porky Puffer, just do that and cross the pit. Cool. These guys suck. You go too fast as well, so you gotta do some left rights every now and then. Left eyes are very important. Is there an advantage to playing natural SNES over having USB S USB controller emulating? Uh, there's input lag when you play an emulator. When I think it'll come out, I have no idea. I'm gonna try to work on it every time. I'm gonna stream when I work on it, so. 
We'll see how long this takes me, and then I'll start actually working on it today. The first Kaizo I ever played was Kaizo. Kaizo Mario World 1. Me and unfinished hacks. You, you, you bet you, man. What is Pan and Waffles? If you're holding down while swimming, you only swim a little up, up a little bit. If you hold up instead, you swim high. I mean, that's pretty accurate. You forgot about the neutral. You forgot about the neutral jumps. Yo, what's up, Zen Gamer? Yeah, we're doing it. What's up, Kit Lemonfoot? It's been okay. Test number one. That's actually a good idea. Actually, I forgot about that. You should definitely, like, near the end, have a level that tests everything you learn. So, that is a good idea that I should implement. And if you die, it resets. <laughs> I should make if you die, you just uh, lose all your progress. Welcome to the first test. On these tests, you will encounter obstacles you learned in previous levels. Whoops. So there's nothing really, uh. Oh. Anything special about these levels. That jump's a little hard, actually. Oh my god, Ariana, what are you doing? <laughs> you are an awful mod. What are you doing? Yeah, regards are really important. And the one thing I mentioned is you want to be able to do really high low bounces and really low high bounces that's really that was really i can explain that later she's drunk again nah she's just the papega smile you just turn in a paper online and realize soon after that most of your in-text citations are wrong oh, that's that's great Hell yeah. <clears throat> oh man, I forgot to put up a... I'll do that after. I was gonna have a Google Doc with everything I wanted to teach. Dude, for <laughs> Ariana, you gotta add Fort Town. <laughs> it's so good. Yo, what's up, with Slasher? Alright, so, uh, the saw. I actually don't know what speed it moves at. I think it's 24 as well. Oh, I keep resetting my accident. Some parts are way too difficult for beginners. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably gonna have that trouble too, because since we know everything already, it's hard to, like, dumb it down. So people that don't really know how to do it can, uh... Can, uh... Learn. But I'm gonna try to do it so, like, I'm gonna try to make it easy enough so the normies, or the people that have never played Kaizo can beat it. That's the end goal. I've gone full nocturnal. Dude, I've always been nocturnal. I always stream this late. I just, yeah, I just started streaming a little later. But, I mean, I, I'm usually up at this time. Levels are easy to make? Yeah, I don't need to think too much. You can dish Yoshi to get more height by pressing A in mid-air. Do it for the noobs. Yeah. I should have hand cam when I do this too. When I have the tutorial series, you'll, you'll get the hand cam. You can also claw. I don't claw though. See how there's like, you can just claw? I don't, I don't, I don't claw. Have I considered using branches? I've considered having every level accessible at any time. So yeah. But I haven't decided on it yet. Which ones hurt the most? Uh, I think I might have an idea, but sure. Sup, Finn Result. Yeah, 
Yeah, like I probably have like a like a kind of a layout like this where everything is. Oh, uh, do I want it? I guess if you really want to have everything unlocked and then you could just freely move into every, any level, I think that'd be the best play. Layer two smash slow. What? What are we doing here, dudes? What are we doing here? Oh. Okay, I guess we just wait. What kind of degrees does this Kaiser College offer? Dude, honestly, I'd be hella down to be like a teacher <laughs> for stuff like this if any what if they had like universities for like esports and they needed like coaches i got you i'll be your coach baby rhinos are loose baby rhinos are baby rhinos as well as big rhinos will jump over little obstacles in their way okay Oh, this is not my hack. I can also do Lunar Magic tutorials, but we'll do this first. In other countries? Heck, man. Bring him here. Mini Star. Be sure to press every on-off switch in this level. Ultra Star levels are usually based around platforms and other on-off switches. I feel like that level didn't teach you anything. <laughs> it's just it just it's just basically saying, yeah, this is an ultra star level. Expect this. It didn't actually teach you any mechanics, I guess. Sub Donmar. If you were streaming, hope you had a good stream. The Bowser statue. Some Bowser statues won't shoot. He forgot the apostrophe. What is Ultra Star? Ultra Star is a level in Kaizo 1 where basically there are on off switches that when you press them it changes the directions that platforms go on. So if you don't hit the on off switch then the platform goes the wrong direction and you're kind of effed. So whenever you hear Ultra Star, you can kind of expect that type of platforming level. Middle Gear 5? Nice, dude. Dude, this is like super situational, man. <laughs> I think the first time I ever saw this was in Dream World 2. Yeah, I feel like this is more informational than actually teaching you mechanics. Which I kind of want to... This is, this is something I put into like the normal path where it like teaches you stuff as opposed to mechanics because I feel like it should teach you the actual like spin jumping off this fire because this fire moves really slow I think it's like 16 and your speed is again 35 or double that yeah it's like double that so common tropes in Kaizvax yeah I mean I can already see that like this level right here <laughs> You don't see this in like any level, honestly. But the Chuck Gate one is something, yeah, you should know because a lot of people use it. Frame perfect. The bass is slowly need to press grab and jump on the same frame on the throw block. It will t to take it with you while jumping from it. Yeah, this is a good level to teach, right? So this is something that you see a lot. And it actually teaches you a mechanic, so this one's good. Also, these jumps suck though. This I hate these jumps, man. I love them and I hate them. I think the be honestly, you want to know the best way to grab this. So if you're a controller, right? You want, if you want to do this, right? You just you just freaking slam your controller. Dude. You just freaking just do that, man. Just do that. 
Just freaking slam it. That's all, that's what I do. You can you like hear me slam it like that. That's like the best way to grab it. Just just slam it, man. Don't smash it though. I kind of need it. The only non-layer two tiles on us would just be mess with our diagonal reels. In uh, normal vanilla, yeah. Take <laughs> yo, sub smash. No, I didn't smash my controller yet. I need to find another one. Is this hack a still work in progress? This hack is finished, but I'm gonna make my own version. <laughs> nah, dude. My control issues are my D-pad, mainly. I'm smashing my uh, input buttons. The shell dome. This one's a very important level to learn. To perform a single shell jump, you need to release the shell at the peak of your jump, but be sure to keep holding jump. Um, you want to release it right before the peak of your jump, not exactly at the peak. Because if you do it at the peak, so if we do it exactly at the peak, there's a chance that you do that. So you want to actually do it like a frame before the peak of your jump. But yeah, around the peak. So. Uh, it, it, unfortunately, West Slasher, it will because people use them, and I hate them. I hate them. I hate them so much, but people use them, so I have to teach it. Yeah, showdowns aren't too hard, dudes. You get the hang of it, don't worry. How to gauge the distance for shell jump? Do you mean height wise or length wise? Or both? Yo, what's up, Mr. Charles? Oh, away from the wall? Oh, okay, so. In this game, there is. A 17 slash 18 frame window where if you throw something it does not interact with you so for example I'm gonna throw this shell at the wall and it won't kill me see so if you want to uh, gauge how far you need to be away from the wall you want to land in the shell about two blocks away so this is one block see right so the shell is one block I am two blocks so I see it right here so you want to bounce off the shell around here. And if you see, if I stand right here, I should get killed by the shell. So right about there is uh, where you want to stand. However, however, this is very important. But the faster you move, the faster the shell moves when you throw it. It's gonna be hard to tell, but like, look for example, I'm not gonna move and I throw the shell. All right. Just pay attention to how fast it moves, right? And now, if we go full speed and throw the shell, look how fast it moves now. So since the shell moves way faster when you do this, you have to be further away from the wall. So that's why it's kind of important when the speed at which you throw it. So that's when you do shell jumps, you see most people like almost stand still when they do a shell jump, like that. If you want to do a shell jump full speed, you gotta throw it earlier, because if you throw it too too late, you'll just go through the shell. Like that. Put in a triple shell jump halfway through the tutorial hack. That one, that one will be for three cats, we'll make that the three cats level. Uh, there were tutorials on this in thewecentral.net. So backstory. Teach how to edit the files of ROM hack to remove most. <laughs> I'll make a little. Advanced cape tricks. Yeah, I'll have a cape level. Wait, do I have, I have weird champ, right? Hell yeah, we do. Two spin jumps. And some patches. There's a tutorial on that as well. 
I mean, I could show you if you want. Well, that's a hard level. <laughs> that's pretty hard. <laughs> okay, champ, dude. <laughs> Is there a way to slow down while flying in S with SNW Cape in Mario Maker? I have no idea. I don't think so. Test 2. Where, Link? Uh, <laughs> just Google it. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I do. Oh, I'm not supposed to stay on that. Whoa, this is actually kind of hard. You actually kind of have to be fast. You're stuck on this level? Dude, this level's actually kind of hard. Wait, you gotta be fast. What the heck? I wasn't paying attention. Yo, fur- Oh my god, I am so happy you get- <laughs> I am so happy that you got 69 readers. A good mechanic solo would be global timers. Yeah, I can do that too. Dude, what's up, fur raiders and streamers? How you guys doing? Welcome to the stream. We're teaching people how to do Kaizo things. <laughs> if you even said, I'm so happy you, you put in the effort. Thank you so much. What the hell, Yoshi? <laughs> There's not much I can say about doing this whole so you just gotta be fast, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty hard. I mean, you just gotta be fast. You already have the orange 4 1 platforms on the list. I mean, what do you wanna know about that? I guess I have to make a list to separate into informational and like mechanics. Because informational just teaches you information about the game. Mechanics will teach you how to actually apply that information. Time platforms. Oh, speaking of the platforms. I mean, is there anything you want to know other than that when you land on the platform it just counts down I'm the first stream to actually acknowledge your questions wait really I mean if you really want I can try to find a patch to on I mean, there's this. That should be enough info for you. Test two is pretty hard. Oh, I keep resetting. God damn it, dude. Whatever. <laughs> what the heck? The block, dude. Alright, this is something you, you don't really need to know, because most people patch it out, but I can explain. Deep the turn block and then the cement block. To do so, you need to hug the side of the turn block and jump when you are on the way down. Throw the shell up when you are on the lower third of the turn block. If the blocks are spinning, then you threw it too early. Alright, so if you want to duplicate blocks in this game, you actually want to make sure the shell is about there. You want the shell to be halfway touching the bottom of the block, right? 
Oh, that's too late. That's too early. Huh. Okay. I wish I was good at this. This is actually really difficult. I can't even pause at the right time. Okay, that might work. But yeah, so you want the shell to be like right, right around uh, here. A little higher. And then you just throw the shell. You should just throw whatever you're holding straight up. You just throw it upwards. So if, it does, if you do that, you threw it too early. So I'm throwing it too early. So right there is what you want. And if you hit the turn block, it's too late. But I don't really think there's going to be Kaizo hacks that force you to dupe a block other than Dreamworld 1. It's also very important that you stand still. Well, it doesn't matter. You just have to make sure you're touching the side of it. Because if you go further away, you actually dupe the block to the side. So since I'm like, so I'm a little further away, and when you're this far away and you're not like touching the wall, you dupe it to the side. This would be so much easier if I could draw on the screen, but basically you can see how the, if you split the shell into four parts, right? You can see that the top right is, uh, the only the top right is uh, touching the block. So that means you're going to dupe it to the side. Like that. So if you're hugging it, it dupes upwards. If you're like near the side, even like a little, it'll go, it'll go to the side. And you can also dupe it diagonally. If you're both, if you're like, if you dupe it the right spot away, you can dupe it to the side. Diagonal, sorry, like that. <laughs> But you need to be a little closer for that. It's really, it's really freaking complicated. And I don't really think you need to know this. The the worst part is it's it's like a frame perfect. It's frame perfect if you're falling down really fast. If you like do like something like this, you see how I'm like standing so much more. It gives you more time, but like, it's pretty tough. Block duping is annoying. And the other thing you the other thing to know is if you want to dupe it to the side, there's actually a 50% chance it, it actually works. So you can do everything right and it won't work. And that's based on something called the frame rule. So the frame rule, that this is the informational stuff that is very important. But basically how this game works is sprites interact with Mario Mario interacts with Sprite every other frame. So because of that, or sorry, Sprites interact with blocks every other frame. So because of that, if you throw the shell up when it's on a frame that doesn't interact with it, it just doesn't work. So like if you do everything right, <laughs> it just won't work sometimes. So, it's it's kind of annoying. But block dupes are just, I don't know, there's something you don't really need to know. What emulator do I recommend? SNES 9X is a pretty good one. Actual hardware is better. Um... <laughs> The freaking screenshot and paint. I'll do. I can do more explanations after this. Don't worry. We'll do more. Yo, what's up, Chrissy? We'll do other explanations. But yeah, I mean, you, there's nothing wrong with the emulator. You just have a little bit of, of a challenge because of the input lag. Is there any hacks I need to create a block to the side? Probably. I have no idea. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. Mushroom and spin. Well, I think this teaches you you can only break these blocks with a spin jump if you're big. So this is a level where left rights are very important to learn. The left rights some by left rights I'm talking about like this. Alright. Cause if you just hold right, I think you just die. Yeah. So this is a level where holding your left rights are really important.
Let's see, left right's le le left right's are super important for that part. If you just hold right, you're dead. Penguin World has a dupe to the side. I don't remember, but maybe you're right. I think you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, I don't mind people chatting. I should never tell you to shut up. Unless you ask the same question like five times and yeah, but I'm I like people that chat. You guys are great. Smile. The torpedo. You can spin jump on torpedo tez, just jump over the munchers. So yeah, like a level like this just tells you that you can what you can spin jump off of. That's it. <laughs> However, what you need to know is this is another level that's important for left rights because if you just hold right, you go too fast. See, look. I'm going hella fast. So this is another level where left rights are pretty important. Like, what I would do is I would just make a, a level that just tells you, hey, this is everything you can spin jump off of. And that's it. Because that's all you need to know, really. You just need to know what you can and cannot spin jump off of. Same thing with regular jumps. What can you regular jump off of and what you can't? Sub SMC Craw. I'm not running Grand Pearl 2 tonight. Wanna make a special level for Rex? Probably. Rexes are a little different, yeah. Like, for the, the special cases, I would make, like, you know, different. Level or oh, different like subworlds and stuff. It's up toasted mildly. Mid air, okay, dude. Mid air, mid air anything is super annoying. I hate, I hate, dude, I hate these types of jumps. Get close to the thwomp mid air so he starts falling down. Once, the, once he starts falling, wait a bit and try to land on him to pass the gap. Those, those are really annoying to deal with. These jumps are just super annoying to deal with. But yeah, like as most people probably rec probably know, you have to get close to the thwomp. If you don't, if you don't, he doesn't start falling. So you need to be about a block away from him before he starts falling. So you use that block of distance to gauge when you want to go on the spin, want to go on a on his little head here, like that. Mid but landing off of mid air, falling mid air things is like it's very annoying. Very annoying. Well, I guess I'll have to teach that. Rotating, rotating platforms. Just some simple platforming with rotating platforms. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, well... Is this really a necessary level? Uh, uh, this type of level, is that really necessary? I'm trying to think. Probably not. What game is this? Learn to Kaizo. If you type an exclamation point... How the number two in Kaizo, I think that they'll give you. Oh, look at Troy, such a good mod, the Eerie. So these guys, uh, they move at 16, I think. Yeah, they move at 16. Well, whatever, <laughs> I want the moon. wavy ones. See, like, that type of level doesn't really teach you anything new, right? The only thing it taught you is that you can spin it up off of Eeries. Yeah, if you throw in the wavy Eeries, then you might be able to learn some stuff, but, uh, I think I'm, I'm gonna try to avoid levels like that. 
Because I want every level to teach you something new. Or a mechanic, a new mechanic. Bubble jump. Oh, these are annoying to deal with. Jump into the bu the higher bubble and fall straight down while holding B. You will land on the Bagumba and get a jump off of. Yeah, these this is really annoying. I hate this type of thing. I mean, that's about it. That one's just... That's, that one's straightforward. No boo fisherman. No fishing boo. That's the first spin jump level without holding jump. Is it? Oh no, there's a saw level. There was a saw level that you had to not hold jump. Precise beans. Oh, is this the string beans level? It is. Green beans. The further you go on the outside, the higher your jump will be off of them. Well, the other thing to know is you can't spin jump off of them. I'm pressing a spin jump button and I'm not getting a spin jump. So that's another thing you should know. The other thing to know is if you try to do a jump like this way and you're too far to the, you're too far off of it, you just won't get a jump, which is really annoying. Or you could do something like this. This, this is pretty good. Oops. Oh my god. He threw in a two-tile gap? Well, two-tile's fine. Orb. He threw in an orb, too. He threw in a two-for-one special. What's up, IDK? Test number three. What did we even learn that was new here? <laughs> wow, he put that in? Oh, <laughs> this is why I hate Midter's stuff, man. Whoops. Tones Balloons. Do you actually want to learn Kaizo's stuff? Because this is the stream to watch, my dude. See, this is why I absolutely loathe landing off falling things. That's something I'm trying to avoid now. Yeah, this is a... Damn, he made that a hard jump. Holy crap. Yeah, there's a couple things I hate. One tile gaps are up there. The frame perfect spin jump trick is up there. This is up there. Well, thwomps, thwomps are hit or miss. Like, this one right here is actually pretty hard. <laughs> this jump right here. Wow, he made that really difficult. Mid-air shell jumps. Mid-air shell jumps are borderline tasks only. And I say borderline because you need peace speed, and there's a lot of variables involved. But you can do them. You can do them consistently, but they're just pretty hard. <laughs> I, I don't get them consistently. Dude. Oh my, why, why did he make that so high? Jesus Christ. What's up, Spud? Is there a consistent way to do spring jumps? Mid are you talking about mid-air spring jumps? Those are a little easier than mid -air shell jumps, but there is a consistent way. And that is to not put it in your level. No, but on a serious note, you just do a left right input earlier than you think. And that's it. You do the mid-air shell jump inputs earlier than you want it. And that's how you do mid-air springboard jump. Holy crap, man. Wrong button. Well, some of the exclamations are just because there's not enough room for message boxes. That's why I'm gonna have to, uh, put some extra commentary in my... What? That's not even the end? 
What the hell? And he threw in a two tile gap? Oh my god, I hate this level. Your 11 year old's playing this right now? Oh, I'm gonna make my own Kaizu tutorial hack as well. Dude, this level's insane. Yeah, Springboard Jumps are just ass in general. We'll get there and I can explain some more. What the f- Nexus is on something, dude. Oh yeah, Nexus is European. But, in my hack, I'm gonna do- I'm gonna have a lot of explanations. Two. I'm actually mad. What's up, doggo? Okay. Dude, you know, you know something's hard when I'm struggling with it. You feel like I should just go for the thwomp? No. There's no way. Dude, this is actually harder than Grand Pearl 2. Look at this jump! What? Ye this guy's insane! You like have to get on it before he starts falling. Otherwise you're effed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yo, what's up, my moth? This jump is insane. Not as bad as Pokies. Oh yeah, the other thing is this is only gonna teach you vanilla mechanics. Not like anything stupid like the, the Pokies. That goes super fast, because that's not in the original game. The original game, they go slow. One block gap munchers? I hope not. Flying item boxes? I mean, there's nothing. There's no new mechanic being taught here. Rip the moon. Oh, is this it? The spring jump? Oh, these are stupid to deal with. <laughs> Run against the wall and jump with the spring in your hand. Drop the spring right bike before the jump of your peak. So there's different ways you can do this. The first thing you need to know about the springboard is you can do this. Remember when I remember when I said it takes 17 to 18 frames before you interact with the item again? Well, uh, springboards don't apply. <laughs> you can pick it up immediately. And it just interacts with you immediately. That's why springboards are so stupid. And not only that, it kills your momentum. See, look at this. It just kill, absolutely kills all your momentum. Even when you don't, like, re-grab the Y button, right? See, it just kills your momentum. In order to avoid, in order for you to avoid it killing your momentum, you have to throw it either too early, like super early like that, or super late. Like, like, uh, like super, super late. But if you want to do like a mid-air, or one of these jumps, you know. oh, yeah. Yo, Keldra, thank you for the Twitch Prime summon. Welcome. Do I prefer dropping or throwing the spring for spring jumps? I actually prefer dropping. So the other thing... Yo, Keldra, thank you so much for gifting a sub to stay hydrated about. The other thing that you need to know, and this doesn't just apply to springboards, but... When you drop an item against the wall, it'll go upwards. See, look at this. See, look how high it gets. 
but it doesn't happen all the time. You wanna know why? This will be easy if you see cement blocks, but... So in this game... Uh, blocks are divided by 16 pixels. So like, if you drop the springboard at a block where a block is, it doesn't move. It doesn't move. You see like you see this right? The springboard doesn't move upwards at all, right? Because it's right at a block. But if you do it at like a block boundary, you can see it goes upwards hella. See, look at this. It goes up hella. Which is why it makes springboard drops a little tougher. Because you don't really know if it's going to go up hella or it's just going to be like, nope, we're not going up hella. See, like that and went up hella. That one went up hella. That one went up hella hella. And that one didn't go up as well. Although, it kind of also applies when you throw it upwards. You can see this one up hella. See, that one up hella. And this one didn't go up as much. That's why springboard jumps are stupid. <laughs> Don't put them in your hack. Are springs better than Mario Maker? They actually are, believe it or not. So, if you drop it against the wall, though, you don't have that problem. Because you always drop it away from the wall, it'll uh, not do that. So you just want to drop it kind of uh, not close to the wall, and you shouldn't have that problem. But it's harder because the, the, the springboard just kills your momentum. It's like stupid, man. I'd rather just do a mid-air springboard jump, like that. And I'll teach you that later because I'm pretty sure there's a little that teaches you that. Is this my tutorial? No. But I'm commentating anyways, because why not? See, dude, I'd rather just do a mid-air springboard. <laughs> They're easier than the stupid wall cuck lord. Item swimming. What's up, Potato Chan? Mario will swim up and forward constantly while holding an item. Use the D-pad to adjust. You will go faster by holding right. Alright, so the one thing you need to- wait, did it, did it explain it in this? Swim up and forward constantly while holding an item. Okay, so one thing you need to know is that pressing up does nothing. <laughs> while you're holding the block. See, like, I'm pressing, I'm pressing up. I'm pressing up. It does absolutely nothing. I'm not pressing up, does the same thing. So pressing up is useless, unless you throw the item. So that means you can't swim higher while holding an item. But if you press down, you swim downwards. I'm trying to think of what else I want to say. Oh yeah, this one's this one's kind of situational, but if you press down for one frame, depending on how fast you're moving vertically, when you press the down button, will determine how uh, how much you go downwards. So like, if you're moving downwards and you press down again, you go down max. But if you're going upwards and you press down, you go up hella- you, you don't go, like, down at all. Let me see if I can do that. Um... Maybe not. Well, I made for an item, it's the same, I think. I think it's the same item, never mind. When you're not holding a- when you're not holding a, an item, actually. Wait, wait, how do I want to explain this? Oh yeah, yeah, see, so for example, right, you're pressing down when you're like not moving downwards at all. Alright, oh, no, sorry, you, you press jump, that's the one I was trying to say. But you press jump when you're falling down, hella, you like, just don't move down. Alright. That's what, that's what I was trying to explain. 
which I guess kind of also applies to swimming. But instead of the jump button, you're pressing the down button. So that same principle kind of applies. I think that's what I was trying to say. I don't know, it's really complicated. Swimming with items sucks. Cramped up space. Please don't be one tile gaps. What the hell is this? Alright, this is a type of level I don't wanna I don't need to put in. What's up, bagels? I'm doing okay. What the hell is this, man? There's nothing to explain about that level except it was, it was <laughs> that was something. The fish and boo. I think I can make ex I think I can make exceptions to levels that have one enemy where they're overused, like a fishing boo. <laughs> fish and boo is something. You can spin him bomb fish and boot. Like that one you kinda just assume. Just keep an eye out for his movement so he doesn't juke you. So you wanna be more precise about that last part. So in terms of juking you, let me see how I can do this. Alright, so this this uh this how do I do this? Uh Yeah, I guess I can't really explain here. Yeah, I, I, I can't really explain this one. I'll have to actually, like, when I make the level, I'll explain it. But, for now, there's nothing you need to know other than they suck. It should have longer levels, should it really? You think these levels are too short? This is good feedback though, good feedback. Tight spins. So there's something really important that this hack has not taught you, and that's the That's the max height. Wait, how do I do this? The max low bounce height and the min high bounce height. So you know how when you when you get a high jump, you go up hella? Alright, so this is a high bounce, I'm going up hella, and then we have the low bounces where you go down hella. But you can also get like super high low bounces like this. And I think that's something that's really important to learn. Like this, see? See how I'm getting max like low bounce heights? And then the, the converse, right? You get the, the minimum height, high bounce. Like these. Um... Those are a little situational, because sometimes you can just do like a max max low bounce jump to make a gap, but sometimes a max low jump isn't enough. So like for example, like if the spine is a little further, I would not be able to make that. And that's where you need the min high bounce, because the min high bounce, you can make that. But the problem is of the ceiling, right? The ceiling's too low, so you need a min high bounce, because if you don't get a min high bounce, you're going to die the muncher, like that. That was really hard to explain, sorry. Again, I'm gonna do an actual in-depth tutorial. This is just kind of covering this hack alone. I didn't make this, so I'm just going as I see. If you wanna do a, a, a low high bounce, you wanna press jump for a, like, you wanna, yeah, this will be way easier to explain when I actually work on it, but you wanna, you want to press a jump button right after, right before you land on it, and then let go of the jump button. And then for the for the max low bounce, you want to hold the jump button right after you bounce off of it. Dino Rhinos, we did this. Jumping off falling enemies is common use in Kaizax. Please, don't do this to me. I hate falling enemies. 
Jumping off and falling in these. God dang. Just <laughs> oh my goodness. These are these are awful to deal with, man. You think coin trails would help? Oh, I accidentally reset. Yeah, you can reset after you beat the level. And I did that by accident, so. Dolphins. Dolphins, also never press the message box with layer 3 tides on the level. Yeah, if you do that, then the water goes away. Well, that didn't really help me. This didn't really explain anything to me. Did it go over gold tape death traps? Uh, not, I don't, probably not. You don't see those that often anymore though, but I can explain that too. Well, this doesn't really teach you anything new. The one, the one of the biggest things I want to teach you is spawning things, how to spawn things, because that's important for like this, for some hacks. A good Kaizo hack will uh, make spawns consistent regardless of what the player does. If you can manipulate a spawn, anything that spawns, then that's like, that could be good or bad. It, be, it could be good because I mean, you could cheat something, or it could also be bad because it means something's inconsistent. Did I make this hack? Nope. Do I like disabling screen scrolling hacks? I actually do now. Well... Yeah, I actually do. Wall running is fun. You can spin up off the wall while wall running, which might come at handy at some point. So the only way to wall run in this game is to jump... is to land on that purple triangle you see there with the smiley face. If you land too close to the wall, you won't wall run. So we'll do that for you. Never mind. He made this jump so it doesn't really do that. <laughs> Wait, yeah, okay. Never mind. I don't think I can. Oh. Huh. Yeah, like that. If you land too close to the wall, you do that. And you can only wall run if you have a moment momentum going into it. If you don't have enough momentum going into it... Ugh. Like this, right? You just won't wall run. So you need some momentum, and you need to land. Um, not right against the wall. So. Whoops. I also want to teach you swapping from A to B for control users. For keyboard users, it's probably not a big deal, but for control users, a very important skill to get used to is swapping between Y and B and A and X. And we'll have to explain that. You get test five. There's five tests, man. Wait, I should change my title because I'm not actually working on my Kaizo hack. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't make this. I changed from working on my Kaizo hack to teaching the normies. You're all normies now. Alright, test number four. At least there's a... Oh, there's gonna be a falling enemy, aren't isn't there? Right there, that's a good example of swapping between B and A. That's a good example of the max low bounce. Why would you put this jump, man? Well, I guess you kind of have to because people use that. So that's so that's the max low bounce jump. This is why these suck. You 
You know, I, I don't blame anyone except the game for that one. Well, that was closer than I wanted it to be. So this is an example of something I'm talking about with spawning, right? So if you want this part to work correctly, you have to spawn this ball and chain as early as possible. And if you don't, like, let me try to do this. I'm gonna try to do this. See, if I don't spawn this as early as possible, well, now I'm just intentionally not doing it, but. I guess maybe it's not. Maybe he, he actually did well in this part. But that's the part where if you spawn the ball and chain too slow, then it'll uh, be on a different cycle and then you won't make it. But I think he made it so it doesn't matter. Which is good. That's what you want. Oh wait, there's something I should mention. <laughs> so with th with the with the throw, the throw blocks, make sure you're not up against the wall when you throw it. Because if you do, you're going to have a bad time. Did I play Celeste yesterday? I did not. So, if you throw it up against the wall, that happens. So you want that. So make sure you're a little away from the wall. When you throw the throw block. Oops. Uh, the other thing you should know is you can't grab throw blocks from below. It's only from the size and above. Oops. Right, I guess I'll explain midair springboard jump, but basically you wanna you wanna do a left right input. This is why left rights are really important. So you know with shell jumps and midair shell jumps, you want to throw you want to throw the shell at the peak of your jump like that. Well, for midair shell jumps or for midair springboard jumps, you want to you want to you want to do it before. You want to do the left right way before. And you want to throw the springboard bef a little earlier. Wait, hold on. Uh, like that. Throwing it way before. I'm doing the left right way before. That. Punton Chucks football. The footballs come at regular intervals after the first, so it's best to time your jump after the first football. Um. Yes, but only if you don't pause the game. <laughs> See how the game is paused? So, uh, technically that's not true. It's on a global timer, which I can explain later. So global timer basically means whether the game's paused or not. Orb. See, this is a good thing about tasting. I know so much about this game. Way more than I should. The double shell jump. All right, you, you you guys better listen up for this one. For, for the for the dudes that struggle. To perform a double shell jump, you need to throw the first shell up and quickly grab the other shell and do a normal shell jump first. So basically, what you want to do is take the first shell. You want the set. You want the. Well, the second shell doesn't really matter. It can be here. It can be over here. But basically, what you want to do is. 
you want to get your first jump to land where the where you're gonna where the second shell is gonna be. So my first jump, you can see, I want it to be like that. I want I want my first jump to land at the second shell, right? Just like that. Doesn't matter where you start your first jump, as long as you and as long as you end the shell jump near, preferably to the left of the shell. Preferably to the left. So like even like even like a jump like this, it's fine. But you do want to, you want you want your jump to be near the second shell, second shell. And now for this shell, so you gotta, you gotta be very careful not to collide the two shells, right? Because they can kill each other like that. So when you when you want to do is be mindful of where the shell is gonna land when you throw it up. So the easiest way to do it is to just stand still, because the shell just not move. But if you want, if you want to, uh, want a little more challenge, then you want to kind of throw the shell up so that it lands about two blocks away from the wall. So like, like that, All right? So that's a good, that's a good angle. So as to when you throw the shell, it's a little less important. But generally, it has to be after the peak of your jump. You don't want to throw it like that. That's that's not good. All right, that's way too early. So you want to throw it like kind of late-ish, like you can throw it super late, like like that even. All right, but it's mainly the more the important thing is mainly just the initial jump of landing where the shell is gonna be. So when you do the shell, I usually probably throw it like halfway as I'm falling down, it's so like that. So not around like here, it doesn't really matter. Again, the position of where this shell is is more important, so... So you, you throw it, and then you want to grab the second shell, and then just do... Uh, <laughs> so I do a shell jump. So. Like so. Oh, I messed up. Again, see, that's why this positioning of where the, you throw the shell is important. You want it to be not too far, not too close away from the wall. Not too close from the wall. Yeah, not too close away. That's why it's kind of better if the, uh, the second shell is a little further away. So that way you can um, kind of predict. So yeah, it is easier if you stand still and do it. And timing isn't too imp uh, too important on when you throw it, but just somewhere after the peak is usually good. Oh, the other thing that's important is you want to you want to not hold the jump button as as you're falling because you fall slower. So you want to maximize or you want to minimize the time it takes you to get the shell. So as soon as you throw the shell, make sure you just let go jump. So I'm letting go jump right, and it gives me enough time to kind of react to that. Oops, you can see that. So yeah. Double shell jumps are getting more common though, so this is something important to learn. Janked up sumo bros. What is there to, to, to learn about the sumo bros? Oh, this. Sumo bros have really weird movement going off of ledges. Try to spin jump on him once he is falling down. So yeah, this is an informational level rather than a teaching you mechanic, because this is just a spin jump off a falling enemy level, which I hate. I think something important though to learn is developing visual cues for mid or for for this type of jump. So like for example, you don't press jump button until you see him do something. So like we'll make a visual cue right now. So I won't press a jump button until he starts moving. Like that. And it should be consistent as long as you just do that. Yeah. So I think that's something that's important to learn. Developing visual cues. Oh, 
when you let go of run, you can't help but release jump as well. Oh, yeah, that's kind of hard. It's something you get used to. Underwater fish and boo. All right. I think this might be a little explain easier to explain the fish and boo mechanics. So the fish and boo is kind of similar to multicultural shell in that it can range in its like movement when it goes back and forth. So you can see this fish and boo is going back and forth, pretty pretty close to me. And you can manipulate that by making them swing wider. But this is also important because oh my god, scratch my nose. Um, wait, I actually messed that up. <laughs> wait, how did I manipulate them by pausing the game? What? So this is a this is an example of a bad fish and boo. Because if you look at the flame, it's like he t he turns his he turns his rod as he's like kind of getting ready to turn around. All right, you can see the flame isn't really moving that much, and that's bad. It's fixated in, in like one or two blocks. So this is a bad fishing boot pattern. You want a good fishing boot pattern, which is this. See how the flame has a wide range? The flame is basically moving with the fishing boot, and this is what you want. You see how there's like a gap where the, the flame doesn't even like come into contact right here? See? This is a good pattern. And the key to underwater fishing boots is learning how to get this good pattern. Because not only is the flame not going to cuck you, but he also is moving at a wide range. When he moves at a wider range, it lets you bypass him, because there's a lot of times where you have an underwater fishing boot and you have to get above, right? So you can kind of manipulate his max range by trying to pre-going the other direction as he's finishing his turnaround like this, right? Look how wide he's swinging. And it gives you so much time to go above him. Same principle applies going below him, right? You want to make sure you get the good pattern where his fishing, where his, the fishing rod moves with him. So like this, right? It's a good pattern. Well, not yet, I guess. I have to get below him first before it matters. But so ideally, you want to you want to make sure that you're falling downwards as he's turning around. So like like that. So you can see it's a, a good fishing boot pattern because I can just stand here and I won't die. And you can also see that he does change elevations. He moves at like a what's the word? Oh, is this an ellipse? Is that what it is? I don't know. So you want to start moving angles. Um, you predict if he's going up and down, right? You can you know he's going up and down, but now he switched his direction of orbit. Now he's going bottom right to top left before he's going top right to bottom left so now now it's doing the opposite right i don't know fishing boots a deal with stuff annoying to deal with i don't know if it's frame rule based or not i asked kaizen man he's like i don't know so i don't know vertical ellipse oh no it's based on mario's position the screen scrolls are relevant Mid Earth Wimp. Why do you do these mid Earth jumps, man? God, I hate them so much. These are so annoying, man. Uh, the, please don't put mid Earth anything in your hack. Unless it's mid Earth. Uh, mid Earth Spring Wimp jumps are acceptable. Mineral thwomps are acceptable too, but they're annoying to deal with. Slippery moles. Do we get the ice the ice level? Watch out, these moles' heads are very slippery. Whoa, Keldra, thank you for gifting one sub to the community. Wiggle Wiggle Prolapse, welcome. <laughs> what the hell is that name? Uh, so I guess this teaches you to do an ice level. An ice level is, uh, everything's ice. Everything on the ground is ice, even the mole's head. Ice physics are kind of annoying to deal with. Oh yeah, that's another thing. This is kind of situational again, but, uh, when the mole crosses a gap, it kills you if you don't jump. Because cause its hitbox lowers and then gets higher, and it's really annoying.
the go around. What's that mean? You are able to climb on a vine while holding an item. Just throw the item up and grab it on the, grab it while you're on the vine. Yeah, that's kind of important to know. He put a one thousand gap. No. Okay. Wait, what? Oh, I'm stupid. Oh, I'm bad. So yeah, you can't grab things on vines. You see? Yeah, just make sure you grab it while you're on the vine. That's, that's basically all you really need to know. Falling Spike. God, man. Barb loves this one. Same as for the Minear Thwomp. Try to trigger the spike and jump off the Minear. The thing you need to know about the mitter or the the falling Dorito is you want to do it. You want to land lower than you think, because the hitbox is a little lower than it appears. Oh, that was way too bad, but I don't know if you can tell there, but I was like lower, a little lower. Let's try it again. If you do two, if you do, if you're trying to bounce out the very top, the hitbox isn't there, and you'll miss. What's up, Jucka? Janky falling platforms. These platforms fall really fast, so you need to react quickly. These do. They fall max speed the moment you touch them. Look at that. I would avoid landing on the edges, because sometimes that'll happen. Yeah, well, this didn't really teach you anything, but... Anything new, sorry. New mechanic. That's what I mean to say. Test number five. Jump landing precision. I don't need that football. <laughs> He really put- oh my god. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll use the football. Yeah, I keep pressing L and R after the level ends tonight. <laughs> to just deal with that. Uh, <laughs> you can tell it's on a global timer because it doesn't start shooting every time I start the level over. Yo, we learning Kaizo now? We learning Kaizo now. Yeah, I was too low for that. It expects spend them some blue coins.
Holy crap. I, was, I didn't expect to land on it, honestly. Hello, shell jump. The key jump. Oh my god, key jumps are annoying. <laughs> the performer key jump, you need to release the key right before the peak of your jump and then jump off of it. But since you need the key to finish the solo, you need to take it with you by grabbing it at the same time as your jump. So this is the same as the throw block. You can you can you can grab it on the same frame you jump. Because if not, you just do that or you do that. So it's frame perfect. Again, I like to slam the controller. You hear the loud button presses? Those tell me press it at the same time. It helps if you're a little away from the wall. Again, if you're if you're not against the wall, you can sometimes get the hella high drop like that, or the hella it doesn't matter drop like that. So a little a little away from the wall is fine. So what I usually do for key jumps is I also hold the jump button the entire time. Except for when I do the, the slam. That's when I let go of the jump button. So if you look at my... Oh yeah, I have an input display. If you want to get a good key jumps, practice this first. Just don't even worry about the second drop. Just worry about timing it so that you drop the key at the peak of your jump. A little before you peak. Alright. And hold jump the entire time. If you can just get this, you're good. And you'll know you get it if you can see Mario stutter on the key for a bit. And that'll train you to hold jump the entire time. Like that. And then once you get the timing to see when Mario stutters, you just slam the controller again. Like this. Boom! Except I missed. Yo, T-Dutch, thank you so much for 2,000 bits. Like that. You don't even have to- you can use one hand to do it, honestly. See, look, it's, it's one-handed. Well, if I don't suck. Yeah, you know, like that. It's a little trick for key jumps. Then you can hold right when you actually want to beat the level. You could, in theory, jump infinitely like that. If you have a... Yeah. You could do infinite key jumps. You can also do a task-only trick called a key drop. Where you, um... If you're like really high in the air, hold on, let me see if I can do this. So you know how like, when you pick up the key, you fall really slow? The thing is you can actually drop the key like that and land on it again as you're falling. And you can do that infinitely downwards. But that's task only. But yeah, you can key jump infinitely. Um, you can key drop infinitely. But the thing is, the thing is, if the key moves too fast downwards, you can't jump off of it and grab it. So when the key's like, I don't know, almost at max speed, then it doesn't matter. You, you can't, you can't like drop the key. Because technically, I think you need to land on the key for two frames. If you land on the key for one frame, it won't work. So, since the key isn't moving too fast when it's falling down, you can do a key jump like that. But when it moves down too fast, you can't. The flying torpedo. Simply throw the shell to the left when you run by the coin and coin run and spin jump on the TED. Oh yeah, so that just tells you you can do you can do when you kill the torpedo Ted, it's it still interacts with you. So I guess it's it. No, it's not frameable based. 
it's not frame rule based at all. I know you said I know I said earlier that you interact with sprites every other frame, but you can grab things every frame. It's just after you throw it. Um you won't grab you won't interact on the same number of frames. That's hard to explain. What if a torpedo shot a torpedo? Torpedoes do not interact with other torpedoes. I inspire you to get more collectibles and Celeste. Cool. Minier Goomba Jump. Alright, these are acceptable. Minier Goomba Jumps are acceptable. Throw the Goomba up and catch in midair, then when he is about to wake up, jump up while holding him and he will bounce up when he bounces. I forget if you have to throw it upwards. I don't think you do. I think you do. Hold on. Oh, I messed up. Yeah, I think you do have to throw it up. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, the reason you have to throw it up and catch it, you have to catch it when it's in the, when it's falling down, so that way it'll do that. <laughs> if you don't throw it up, it'll be... I think you can still do it, but I think it's harder. You don't really need to know how it works, you just need to know that you have to do that. Ah yes, the subpixels. P-speed midair. Run a full speed and jump like go of the D-pad and line X right before you hit the shell to successfully make the shell jump. Alright, so... Yeah, so since you can grab it every frame, actually when you kick the shell, it, that's every other frame. So that's why sometimes the shell goes super far away from you like that, and sometimes I hit it right up to right up against it. Oops. All right, we're gonna throw some trivia here. So your max speed when you're running, it oscillates between 47 and 49, and when you average it out, I think it's like 48, 40. Is it 47.8? I think it's 47.8. And when you kick a shell, when you get when you knock into a shell, it moves at a speed of 46. So that means you move barely faster than the shell, as long as you're holding right and you kick it and you, you knock into it. Like that. But you only move 47.9 if you're holding run and you have P meter. So when you let go of run, uh, to, to let go of the shell, you slow down briefly. So that, that that's why you gotta make sure you re-grab it fast enough, because if you don't do it, then it's no bueno. Yo, what's up, dude? Well, technically it doesn't matter if you let go of the run button when your speed's 48 or 49, because it slows down anyways based on how it oscillates, but... I don't like these types of jumps, because there is another variable involved. Besides the frame rule, well, I guess if you don't, if you have it set up like this, where you just hold run and right. But if it's if you put this like in the middle of the level, we're gonna throw some facts on you, right? And that is the fact that when you're max speed, you can get two different jump heights, and those two different jump heights can make or break the jump, which happens a lot in Grand World 2 in the shell jump room, because if you jump when your speed is 47, you get a lower jump, which means that if you jumped like when you're supposed to, or a little before, you're gonna fall short. 
And if you get a speed of 48 and 49, you get a higher jump. You get the max height jump. And that's generally what you want because you have a higher probability of get. Yeah, you have a higher probability of getting the higher jump. Because there's a three-fifths chance you get a higher jump and there's a two-fifths chance that you don't. So that's why sometimes I might get a poopy jump. Uh, that's why I mentioned the poopy jump in Grand Pearl 2. If I get a poopy shell jump, I land like before I get the shell. So that was a bad frame right there. You can see I, got, I knocked the shell hella. That one I kind of jumped early and I think I got a poopy jump. So that's that's another frame rule thing. <laughs> I knocked the shell hella early. Frame rule is on a global timer. Wait, no, it's not. Well, it basically is with the retry system, but every time you enter the level. Wait, no, it's on a global timer. Yeah, it's on a global timer. Okay. But I think you can make it if you get the bad frame rule, you just have to be more precise. Something else to blame new screw up, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you get too good of a jump that you overshoot the shell, which can happen because you get the good good jump. Most hacks nowadays, yeah, I think most hacks nowadays probably remove the frame rule patch, but or frame rule, but you should you should know about it anyways just in case. Just jump correctly, lol. Midair pow. Oh boy. Grab the switch and jump to the right. After the peak of your jump, throw the switch and let go of Y and X. The switch should... What? Throw the switch up and let go of Y and X. The switch... <laughs> Wait, did he forget to put another message box? <laughs> Okay, so this one's all right. So this one is uh, yeah. You just want to land on the P switch as you're falling downwards, but not when you're falling max speed. The thing that's a little janky is sometimes you won't land on the P switch P in the midair. That's why it's why when you jump when you land when you uh land on the P switch, you want to be like inside of it. Cause it, see how it pushes you out, and it's during that when you land on the P switch. But if you're trying to like land on it when you're already on the out, you can see that it's like harder to actually land on the edge or land on top. So that's why you wanna wanna be inside of it when you land on it. If you're on the outside, it's harder. See, it's a little harder, but you wanna be on the inside. So with this idea, you just wanna hold uh hold upright and throw it at the. P Throw it before the peak of your jump, and then just let go of Y, and it should line up perfectly. Like, you don't need to re-grab Y until after you hit the P-switch. So if you look at my input display, after I throw it, I'm not even holding Y. See? These ones are a little free. Just a little, though. So, so that one's not too bad. What's Y again? Oh yeah, this is button. This is Y. I should probably put my other input display up, but it was broken before. I don't know if they fixed it. All right, so we talked about the midair springboard already. I really hope less people put this in their hack because springboards are so stupid for this sole reason right here. This is the sole reason springboards suck. Also, they don't res. Um, wait, never mind. Whoops. So. Oh god. You want to do your left right input. You want to do your left right input earlier than you think and you want to throw it earlier than you think like that. Dropping it. Are you talking about like this type of drop? <laughs> Dude, midair is way easier than that. This type of drop I suck at. That's hard. I don't do that. Four if you include giving up. 
There's actually a way you can jump off the springboard without turning around, but it's pretty precise. There's a task only way where you can like do in front of you. Well, I guess it's not task only, but it's harder. Something like that. One thing you should know about this game is items. When you drop items, they move faster than you. I don't know the formula that determines how fast they move when you drop something, but like if you see, see how the springboard's moving faster than me when I drop it. That's why midairs. That's why you have to do um, like the little left right. To either drop it or uh, kick it, which is different than Mario Maker because when you drop something in Mario Maker, it moves slower. Well, it doesn't always move slower, but I think it has just like a set speed and gets dropped at. I don't even know. So that's why um, some tasks, when they do mid air, like, P, uh, this is also situational and it's also task only, so you really need to worry about it. But sometimes you need to drop a spring, uh, drop a, drop anything like a shell or a P switch that's not behind you to do a mid air, uh, whatever. And the way to do that is you have to slow yourself down before you drop it, which is really stupidly hard. It's not task only. Well, it's mainly task only. You can do like. Like the there's a force of illusion one secret exit small only strat where you do that type of shell jump. It's just like super hard and, and like not worth it. Oops. If you do that, that means you threw it too early. Oh wait, no. If you wait. Actually, now I forget, man. I forget if... No, no, no I'm bad. I, I, I just wasn't holding right when I threw it. I lied. If you if you throw it to the left, it's just because you weren't holding right. That was doing bad. Is it like a Sheldon and Mario Maker? You can also do a Sheldon and Mario... Yeah, it's like a Sheldon and Mario Maker. God dang it. I keep throwing it too early. So you want to do a super fast left right and kick it early, but make sure you're holding right. One. <laughs> Midair shell jumps, man. These are these are the dump with these in your hack. Since this trick is really hard to explain, it would be best if you search it for Shell Jump Tutorial by Dram551 on YouTube. He explains it. For now, wait until I explain it. Right now. Welcome to the mid air training room. If you don't want to play this level, simply use the door to skip it. The other blocks is more info. Alright, so mid air Shell Jumps in Super Mario World. A little different, because there's a lot of variables involved. And that is how good your left right is and when you throw the shell. <laughs> and the frame rule, I guess, but if you patch up the frame rule, it doesn't really matter. But for mid-air shell jumps, you need you need a really good left right, honestly. <laughs> like that was a that was a good left right, but I threw it too late. Okay, that was just my up button, but you wanna like do for my left race, like, I'm literally just doing this. I'm just, like, sliding my thumb. And then, you just do a shell jump. But. So, like, for example, I think that was a good input. But I think I got a bad frame rule. I might have thrown the shell a little too late, but. Ideally, remember when I said your speed oscillates between 47 and 49? Well, since you can't control that, you wanna you wanna make sure you throw the shell when you're at 47 and 48 for a better probability, because the shell moves slower. Because remember, the shell moves faster the faster you're moving. So if you throw the shell when you're moving slower, the shell will move slower, which means that you have a better probability of jumping off the shell. Yo, just have with the rate.
Uh, they're not RNG. They're just, oh, this is a lot of variables you can't really control. Well, I guess you can kind of control something. But yeah, if you if you do a perfect left right and you throw the shell at 49, it's still possible. It just is way harder because <laughs> the shell moves way faster. Well, that time I just threw the shell early. Yeah, no problem. Hope you had a good stream. Oh, you could tell that left right was really bad because I moved, I slowed down hella. So like that, that was a good left right. You can see I barely lost any speed when I turned around. So a good left right is when you see I barely lose speed and I throw the shell at the right time. Oh, R9 KOs to, to avoid the bots. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys had a good stream. Oh yeah, I forgot to follow his mode. I got followers mode only on because uh, we got botted again. Alright, so there's a second type of shell jump we're going to try to do, <laughs> which is this. Oh my god. Alright, hold on. I want to do this. So this shell jump is way harder. It's the shell drop. <laughs> so you need, a, you need to slow down hella when you uh, drop the shell and you can see the shell moves way slower. So that's why you need to slow down. Oh my god. These inputs are stupid hard. Because <laughs> you have to let go of grab, you have to re-grab it to build up speed, and then you have to let go of grab again to hit the shell and then re-grab it. So you have to let go of Y two times. <laughs> and you also have to not drop the shell too early. Oh! <laughs> this, is, this is an insane shell jump. Oh, I threw that way too early. Oh my god. What mashing button work okay? No. You need to hold Y to build P meter. Oh, that was it. Oh my god. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, alright. Where in will shell drop be preferable? Never. <laughs> you should never do this. This is never preferable. This is just for- I'm just trying to style on you guys. Oh my god, that was it. Oh, uh, so if I grab the shell, that means I press Y too long. Because I don't want to- So, because you only kick the shell when you aren't holding Y, right? You can tell I kick the shell when you see this little, um... Wait, that was it. You see that little uh, graphic right there? That tells you I kicked the shell. And you don't, and you know I don't kick the shell. I do this. I knock into it. You don't see that little thingy. And sometimes you'll see the score, but it depends if they remove it. And you want to knock into it because the shell moves slower. Because again, look how fast the shell moves when I don't kick it compared to when I just kick it like that. So that's why you just want to knock into it. Also, when you re-grab the shell in midair, it like. It warps to your Y position, your X position, or Y position. So that's also why you want to knock in the shell, because the shell you want the shell to be below you, and when you grab it, it warps up to you, and you're dead. Oh my god. It's the midair shell drop, like, P-speed midair, but I have to set up P-speed midair. Oh no, that was it! <laughs> Oh my god. And I let go of jump too. I should maybe just not let go of jump the entire time. So th these are inputs that hurt my brain because I also let go of the jump button to make it easier on my brain. Oh my god. Oh no, I grabbed it too early. Oh Jesus. Again, you shouldn't you shouldn't learn how to do this. This is way too hard, but I just do it because it looks cool. Oh, there you go. See, that's it. That's that's just not worth it. Don't do that.
So the only time you actually want it, the only time you actually need to do that is if. So if there's like a wall right here, right? If there's a wall here, then you have to do the drop because if you do midair shell jump, you uh, you're just gonna run into the wall. So that's like the only time if the if a Kaizak forces you to do that type of shell jump, they have to have like a wall or like a, a wall up here. You get Pangabot. Is Pangabot not here? Oh, I guess Pangabot's not here. How fast do you have to do all the inputs? For which one? The mid-air shell jump or the shell drop? Because for both, you have to do some crazy ass inputs. Well, for the shell drop, it's crazy. Yeah, the mid-air shell drop or the mid-air... Just the mid-air. Oh, just the mid-air. You have to do the left right really fast. Your left right has to be super, super good. To the point where it doesn't look like you slowed down. Like, that was a good one. I think I just got a bad frame rule. Former Yump, you need to press A, B, right when you land on the switch. Be sure to not hold Y or X when hitting the switch. Yeah, you want to hold Y and X because you, uh... We'll just grab the switch. So one thing you want you want to learn is... When you're in the air, and you let go of the run button, or if you let go of any direction, you preserve whatever speed that is. So you can see, when I jump here, I'm going to jump here, and I'm not going to hold right anymore. And you'll see my speed is... I'm, I'm still moving to the right. So, we're going to let go of right right now. I'm going to walk jump. Wait, 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 I'm gonna wall jump this, actually. Can I, can I do this wall jump? Huh! No. So for this part, what you wanna do is just jump and let go of right after you jump. So, boop. You land on the P-switch. And for a tip, uh, a tip for yumps and P-jumps, which I really don't think you're gonna have to worry about because I don't think any hack's gonna force it besides Jermold 1. Is you do A and B in, the, in two different frames. This game runs at 60 FPS. If you press A and B in two consecutive frames, you have a better chance of pressing it on the right frame. So like, I'll do like like that, that kind of like this. And then I'll hold one of the buttons. It doesn't matter B than A, but I do... Or A than B. I do B than A. So when I land on this P-switch, I'm gonna press... I'm gonna try to guess when to jump on it. You actually want to press the jump button right before you land on it. Like a frame before. So we're gonna do that. So right before I land on it, I'm gonna... Do the... Do the... Do this little thing. So I'm gonna try that already. And uh, that gives you a higher probability. I did it first try though. Super duper glitch jump. Jump on the Yoshi and send him down on the ground. Jump up again and get on an invisible Yoshi. Jump to the right, press A. You need to dupe the Yoshi block so you can have two Yoshis. Once you dupe it quickly, hit the other block, now you have to... Okay, I'm definitely not going to put this in my hat, because you don't need to know about this. <laughs> Alright, so... there's There were two Yoshis, right? There were two Yoshis. There's only one, but there's actually two. But just the one is shown. So, we're actually on both of the... Well, are we on both the Yoshis? No. We want, we want to get on the Invisible Yoshi. So we were on the Invisible Yoshi, but now we're in the actual Yoshi. So we're going to get off this Yoshi, and I'm going to get on Invisible Yoshi. Here's Invisible Yoshi, right? We, we're on Invisible Yoshi. He's just, uh... He has no legs. But the thing that's cool about Invisible Yoshi is, when you press the A button, you get warped to his Y position. And since Invisible Yoshi is right here, 
we're gonna get warped up to wherever that Y position is. Oh no, I'm on invisible point. So there you go. We're gonna get warped onto that Y position when I press the A button. Whoa, look at that. Look at that, see? But it doesn't work when you're on the actual Yoshi because it thinks you're on actual Yoshi, not the invisible Yoshi. And it's cool because it works with, with items. And you, uh, you technically can ride Yoshi while holding a shell, but this way's easier. So we're just gonna do that. I don't think any hacks gonna force this future hacks, but uh, <laughs> if you wanna know how to do it, there you go. Hey, we're big. Look at that. Test number six. Oh, we're not big anymore. Feels bad, man. Wait, I wasn't prepared for that. Wait, come back! <laughs> oh. It would've been nice if we put some coin indicators to where I was supposed to land. So that's a bad frame rule. The shell went hella ahead of us. Some obelisk. Here we go. Bitter stream more drums. Not like this. Nice raw Mac Nexus. If you grab the springboard, you threw it too early. You threw it too late. Floaty shells. What is this gonna entail? Welcome to the cape section of this hack. In this tutorial hack, you will learn how to use the cape here. Floating shell dumps are super easy. Simply release the shell whenever you are about two to three blocks away from the wall at any time. So I want to add on to that. There is a chance that when you spin the cape, it'll instead of you bouncing off of it. Because every time you let go of the Y button, right, it, it spins the cape, unless you're ducking. So actually, first of all, unless you have to be f standing, I would suggest ducking. So that way, when you when you have to repress the Y button, you don't spin the cape. Because when you spin the cape, there's a chance you accidentally hit the shell and don't shell jump off of it. And I'll try to do that here. Oh. Hell. Keldra, thank you so much for the gift sub to bagels, and welcome. So yeah, there's a chance when you do the shell jump, um, you won't shell jump and you, um, spin the, spin the cape and hit the shell by accident. So I guess there's two tips, it's either to do ducks so you don't spin the cape ever, or you press the Y button after you do the shell jump, like that. So that's one tip I have, just in... Cape shell jumps. So we're gonna duck so I don't deal with that nonsense. Oh, okay, I do, I, do, I don't, I do have to be standing because you can see right there I kind of died. So there you go. The cape is kind of annoying to deal with because sometimes you'll spin the cape and you either won't spin the turn block or you won't spin whatever you're trying money, to hit. Money, money, money. Got him. How'd you lose your job? Thanks for two hours. It's very complicated. Very complicated. <laughs> 
Oh, I did make some mistakes, and I'm learning from it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Spinning is... Some, the cape spin is a little weird because the way the cape works is it oscillates every four frames which side you spin. And I think that's on an end level timer. It doesn't like do every other frame, which I feel like it should. Every other frame it, it changes direction, but every four frames. Which is why sometimes you can get really close to something without spinning it. Like the shell, for example, right? This Koopa. But it's kind of something you don't really need to worry about too much. If you go full speed into an enemy while you're spinning, there's a chance you get hit because of that. I don't know if Kazuman's um, patch fixes that though. Is it the same four frame when you turn around in the midair while flying? Yeah. Any Kaizo tricks I consider myself trash at? Not throwing things up when I want to throw it to the left or right. Um, I don't really know off the top of my head. I think there's something I'm bad at. Duck flight? Oh, I thought he was going to make you uh fly while ducking. Well, I didn't really teach you anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a patch which Kaizumi made for me for Jeremiah 2 where if you spin the cape you always turn around while flying. But in vanilla Super Mario World, it's on a frame roll. But I'm gonna assume that... Um, in my Kaizo hack, should I assume that everyone uses that patch? I don't know. Cape cancel. If you find enemies or munchers, you won't lose the cape, but we'll start spinning. You need to abuse that on this. That is only if you're in cape form, flying form. So this form right here, that's the only time. And you can't be sliding on the ground when you do it. Otherwise, you'll... Uh, get hit so you have to do it in so you have to do it while you're in the air which is why it's not really that big of a window because this is uh you have, you have this much space to work with but as long as you just like land right here you should be good like that so you do get a brief invincibility So as long as you're in that um, phase, you'll take you'll you'll uh, you won't lose your cape and you'll have invincibility. Whoops. <laughs> oh, that's because the retry system gave me invincibility. Assume vanilla. Yeah, we'll do it. I guess we'll assume vanilla. <laughs> Turning around is still possible. It's just way harder because you gotta be you gotta be prepared for either direction because you won't know if you're facing left or right. But you can still save it. Like if you if you're facing right and you want to turn around left, but when you twirl and you're still facing right, you can save it. So I guess I could teach it like that. It's harder, but it's still possible. What's up, pug? I'm playing on a console. You can type an exclamation point fact if you want more info. Vine flight. Oh, this is all annoying stuff. I feel like I would combine those three into one level. I bomb into the vine and hold on to it. Once you're on it, climb to the top and jump. If you are facing to the left, just land back on the vine. If you face to the right, wait until you are at the peak. You jump and press the right button and dive bomb.
So you can actually figure out which direction you're facing. If you look at Mario's arm, you see his arm? It's on the left right now. Is that his arm? Or is that his, like, I don't know what that is. Is that his hand? Well, in the case, depending on which side it is, uh, I'm going to say his hand. It's depending on which side his hand's facing will determine which way he, he flies. I actually forget, so let me find out. Oh, so it's the, it's the side that the hand's pointing. So you can see his hand's on the right, so I'm going to face right. So my hand's on the right, I'm going to face right. My hand's on the left, it's going to face left. So yeah. The fun fact is, while you're grabbing the vine, and if you take damage, you'll get that invincibility thing from the last level. So you'll still have your cape when you take damage, but... The spin flight. Simply press the spin jump on A when you have P-Speed to start flying. Spin flying. So one thing I want to go over in my hack is how P-Speed works and how P-Meter works, and how Takeoff Meter works. Because those are all relevant if you want to learn how to do cape. And Takeoff Meter is 80 frames, and if you want to be able to fly, you need to have at least two when you jump. I also want to explain how stupid cape is in this game, but it's also great, because The best way to explain this is the game checks every 16 frames, every set of 16 frames. There's a specific 16th frame. I think it's right after you jump. Yeah, right after you jump. It checks every 16 frames to see if you're pressing a jump button. And on that 16th frame, if you're pressing a jump button, you go upwards. And if you're not, you go downwards. Which is why sometimes if you're holding the jump button, or you let go of the jump button, you still go upwards sometimes. So I'll try to showcase that here. So when I get to this Dorito right here, notice how I'm going to let go of the jump button and I still go upwards. So you see right here, I let go of the jump button and I still go upwards. Because that is, that's where it checks, the 16th frame, it's like right around there. And it checks to see if I'm pressing the jump button. And since I was holding it, I was pressing it, I go up. So sometimes that's really annoying to deal with, but something you should know about. Oh yeah, speaking of the cape spin, right? See how I'm pressing A? And sometimes I hit the bottom block, and sometimes I don't. Well, I wish I could show you. Okay, whatever. You saw it once, but that's basically the the frame I'm talking about. Door flight. So this is relevant for takeoff meter. If you enter an, if you enter and door with an and dive bomb, you are able to control continue flying after the screen transition works with pipes too. Only works if you do it within 80 frames. Alright, so 80 frames is about a second. So you have like a little over a second to gain this pipe to, ke to keep going flying. So, for example, right? We have flight. But if we wait too long, we wait one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and we go in now, we don't have it. So you have within like at those 80 frames and that's assuming there is no ground because if there's ground then you have to jump again and you have to be falling downwards to start your flight so you have even less time if there was ground yo thanks for the hot bits all right we're gonna teach you a little flight right here so example in most kaizo hacks they probably patched out turning around so you can turn around by pressing the x button and I actually claw. You can I, I can show you. I'm clawing here. Yeah, 
Because you have to be holding X or Y at all times. If you let go for one frame, you stop flying. Well, technically it's not true, but just assume that's true. So, that's how you turn around while flying. But you don't always turn around when you press it. See, look, I'm going I'm to spin jump here, and I have a 50% chance of facing right. And I don't. So the key to uh, gauging when you're going to turn around is you want to you want to spin right after you start flying, so it gives you the most time to react. So like, I want to turn around and face right. So I'm going to spin right now. I'm not. But now I am. So usually I won't. Uh, I'll try to go slower, and you can go slower by tapping B, or pressing B. Every time you press B once, you slow down a little more. Alright, so you want to get this, this slow speed so it gives you enough time to react. So you press spin jump now, and I don't slow down, or I don't face left. So I want to spin jump again, and I face left, and that can change. So, it gives you, it gives you a little chance to react if you're going to turn around or not. But you have to be prepared for either case, if you do turn around or if you don't. Dude, alright, are we close to being done? <laughs> How many levels is this? We gotta be close to being done eventually, right? Jesus Christ. The slow down, fly, tap left, and be together. Yeah. Does that work in Mario Maker? No, Mario Maker cape is trash. See, so yeah, this is where we do the tap, be the slow down. Whoops. Three more levels in the final test. Cool. Whoops. So something you want, something you should know about is when you're flying, your max speed is 51. It oscillates when you're going with max flight speed. Like when you're in this form and you're holding right, your max speed oscillates between 57 and 51, and it actually averages out to 49. Believe it or not, it's not 48.8 or whatever. It averages out to 49. And every time you hold right your flight increases by four. It's important to know because when you de when you press B to slow down, it decreases it by six. And this is zero speed. You can't fly with zero speed, by the way. You have to have at least one. Did I say 59? Oh yeah, 49. So yeah, it's important to know because your speed decreases more than it increases. You can see I went I'm going backwards now. So it's just something important to know. So that's why when you tap left or you tap right, because you want to go faster, right? I'm gonna tap right to go a little faster. And when you tap B it slows down more than it increases. So that's just something you should keep in mind. And the slowdown you have to repress the B button. If you press it once, it slows it. If you press it and hold it, it just does it once. See, so yeah, that's why you have to keep tapping B to slow down. Omega lull, dude. Omega lull is pretty good. The sticky fly. All right, sticky fly. To perform the sticky fly, you need to pull up at the correct time right after your dive bomb. Follow the coins and try yourself. So what he means by dive bomb, by the way, is when you get this animation. You see when he's like fully going downwards? That's when when you see that animation, you can get the dive bomb. See right there? I didn't get it. Like you... Oh crap, I was trying to pause it. So there's a total of six animations that you can get, and you want to get, you need to get the sixth animation. Oh damn it! This is the third animation. If you're curious, that's the third animation. Oh, uh, this is the fourth animation. Wait, wait, wait. I need, I'm, I need to show you the fifth animation. No, I think this is the fifth animation. Keldra, thank you so much for gifting a sub the Bodacious Snail. And Bodacious Snail, welcome. So I think this is the- I think that's the fifth animation. Hell yeah. Holy crap, Keldra. 
I'm trying my best to show it. <laughs> yeah, this is the fifth animation. Thank you for gifting some of the replacement. Welcome to the uh, two new people. Holy crap! Keldra, thank you for gifting another sub to level level nine. So you need to see the you need to see this animation right here. The dive bomb, that one right there. If you don't see that, you're not getting a dive bomb. Once you get that dive bomb, you can pull up and get a super high jump. So we'll show you right right here. We get the dive bomb, you can get that animation. As long as you get that, you'll get a super high flight. You don't have to be holding left the entire you, you don't have to be holding left the entire time. I'll show you an example here. See look. Well, there's a wall there, so I guess it doesn't really help. Oh my god, well... Yeah, basically you can, uh... Preserve it for a bit before you do it. Like that. That's kind of hard to see. Like that. See, you can preserve it for a bit. So for Sticky Fly, you need to just make sure you get the you get the cape pump very close to the ceiling. So, we're gonna show you right here. See, we got very close to the ceiling, so it worked. But if you're too low, then you just get a bump, and I can show you that. Yeah, see right there, I was too low and I got a bump. So that's why it's a little precise. Cause you have to be near the corner of the level, because it sets you up perfectly. Because when you like go in, at, when you go in at the corner at like this, it gives you a better chance of hitting the ceiling. Because if you bonk the ceiling, right, or you bonk the wall, you're gonna lose all your momentum, so it won't really work. So, here's some trivia. Hi, Monica. How you doing? Will be a quiz. Deal, man. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're on the final test. Yo, this this overworld got the cooler, cruel action. Welcome to the last test. You will encounter some tricks you learned in the process of getting here. You should encounter all the tricks. You know what? You should encounter all of them. What the hell is that? Hello? Is this going on YouTube? Uh, maybe. Is this, at, is this, is this actually helpful, guys, by the way? Hopefully it is. Hi, Yoshi. Uh, I could probably put it on YouTube then. Oh no, he's putting one of these. Oh my god, what is this? Yeah, I'm glad you guys are learning. I'm here to teach things. Oh, one tile gap man strikes again. Oh, you. You debater, man. I'm mad. I didn't think he put coin blocks in. But I should have expected them. Hey, man. I, I would honest. I was going to put a Kaiser block in my tutorial, so it's fine. I don't feel bad now <laughs> if I do it. The mad lad, man. <laughs>
Oh, I was not prepared for that. So you, you get to see right here what I mean by you have to keep tapping B. Alright, if you look at my end of the side, keep tapping B. So I want to make my palm face to the right, my hand, whatever. Oh, okay, sure. That works. Oops. Seven taps. Was that actually seven? Oh, uh, you can just hold forward. You don't have to tap it to go faster. Yo, Doyle with the raid. Thank you so much for the raid, my dude. Oops. And I hope you had a good stream. There we go. The double shell jump. Hey, give me this. Whoa, wait, I gotta no, I can't stop the timer yet. There we go. I know some of you are can appreciate that. Beta testers. All these guys. All that tested this thing. And he has some Thomas made by Nexus 15. Nexus is still a good person. Very good creator. What? Wait, what? I didn't even get to see the thanks for playing. It is left. Alright, so this gives me a better idea of what I'm putting in my hack. My tutorial hack, so that'll be fun. Give me, give me a better idea. Oh, yeah. Holy crap, Keldra, thank you for gifting two more subs. And welcome, guys. Hey, no, that's, that's no problem, appreciate that. So yeah, that's the that's the a walkthrough tutorial of this hack, at least. So at least we got the full commentary for the Learn to Kaizo. And uh, I guess I'll probably put it on YouTube. Miss opportunity to call it Kaizo College. I'll call mine Kaizo College. <laughs> World record. People actually do speedruns of this. Dude, Storks 2 is something else. <laughs> Salmon, I don't know. Salmon might be doable. 